Hello, my name is Kevin and welcome to Love Decanter channel. So today I'm going to talk about decanters that weren't fitted for stoppers. Now I'm not talking about carafes, I'm talking about decanters that weren't fitted for stoppers. And um, yeah, how can I describe this? So they would be designed to have uh, a cork stopper with a metal top of some, some kind. Um, this is one. This would have ne this has never been fit. If I feel inside, I can actually feel it feeling a bit wobbly. There's no area in there where a stopper, where a glass stopper, would have fitted snugly, and it was never had designed to have one that sat on the top either. Um, yeah, so there's a few different kinds, and um, rather than baffle you with the books, because I'll do the books afterwards, what I will do is we'll just go straight to the glass. And I'll show you the different types that I've got. Um, I'm sure there's more out there, um, but yeah, this is a fairly standard mid-century, uh, mid-nineteenth century one, I should say. But um, so yeah, let's let's get straight to the glass, and we'll we'll start we'll start with this type, okay? Um, so let's get on with the video. So here we are with the first one I'm looking at. Um, it is off to the side for a reason, and that will become apparent. So, yeah. So this is frosted, okay. This is a process, I think it was um, invented by Richardson's in 1851. You can see it's got a lovely big polished puntle and lots of wear around that. So this would have been fashionable for about 20 years. So you really, if you were dating this, you would say mm, 1850 to 1870, something like that. And um, yeah, I don't. I think they've actually polished these little bits here out, and they've cut these little grooves. But in cross section, in actual fact, you can see it was probably blown into a mould with grooves in it, wide grooves, really unusual pattern. And then it's got this ring here near the top, and then no pouring lip at all. Um, that's just the way it is. It's got a few little tiny chinks and stuff, but that's that's fine. That's fine. This is really nice. I was given this by Matt. Thank you, Matt. It is really lovely. I like that a lot. And there is a reason why it's back there looking so small, because I have this to put next to it. It's a monster. Yeah, so this one I think would easily hold a wine bottle. This will probably hold a bottle and a half, a litre or so probably, or a couple of pints, depending on which way you want to put it in. But anyway, this one's a little bit earlier. I think this one is pre, well, yeah, 1840s, maybe 30s, but that's the kind of look with this step cutting. And yeah, but very similar look at this cut ring just below the neck or below the pouring lip but no pouring lip there's a couple of chips in there but um, that's probably where people have tried to jam glass stoppers in but yeah, it's got its kind of pouring lip that little bit there there would have been no pouring lip okay this is and then you've got this ring here and then this one's got a star cut base and if you run your fingers inside, it, I can't feel. Normally, if this had it was polished out for a stopper, you could run your finger inside. It would be really smooth, and then you'd feel the bottom of the cutting, um, where um, where it had been cut to fit the stopper. But you don't feel that. It just goes straight in. There's, you know, it's smooth all the way in. There's no edge of the bottom of the cutting for the stopper, and you'll feel that the same on this one um, and from the supply so these are all a similar period mid 19th century this one is the same probably the same age as this one here but very different looking sublime to the ridiculous Look at that little monkey yeah so that's your sort of like shafting globe but a little bit squashed a little break in the shoulder there but with the same ring here no pouring lip and this one clearly you know this one's not even cut 
So this is really, you can see that is all natural glass there. It's not cut inside at all. Um, but with the same pouring, I presume, theoretically, this is to stop the drips from just dropping straight back down the, because it's got no pouring lip, straight back down the neck and onto your hand. Um, it's got punch puntal. You can see a massive wear. This is probably about the same age as that, probably about 1850, something like that. It's a bit murky. Um, but yeah. So this is the style. No pouring lip and a neck ring. And these are usually from around the middle of the 19th century. Probably, you, you go probably 20 years each way, I think. Yeah, but when you put your finger, if you see that looking like this, you can put your finger in the field. Yeah, there's no, it was never cut to fit a stopper. And it kind of winds a little bit at the top, but barely, barely and imperceptibly, I think might be the word. And that probably just where they ran the tool round just to make it nice and round. Um, so yeah, you can feel it widening slightly, but that's just to finish it off when they're using the tools to make sure they've cut it off and they're just trying to finish it and make it nice and round at the top. So there's that one. So let's go over to something else. Actually, before we go over to something else, I thought I'd show you something. Yes, I've got one. So I keep, I do have stoppers for these but not like you'd expect. This is what I have. This is an older one. It's got brandy written on it. You can just, that would be a lot of black brandy though, but you just put it up there like that. That's how it would be that kind of thing. I've got this one here, which has got claret written on it. And you just, there you go. That's how they would be something like that with metal top, cork base, that would, I mean, this is not original, I just put this one in. You can see actually that's where the original one would have been. It probably would actually been. No, it doesn't go in that one either. So anyway, yeah. Um, that is how they would have looked originally with some sort of cork fitting for the top with a metal bit on the top, not just a cork. So yeah, and I will probably cover those as a separate video. I have a drawer full of them and I can show you all sorts of different kinds. So this is another kind of decanter. It's called a bar lip decanter. Okay. These are not very common in the UK. I think there's one reference in, the, in Andy McConnell's book um, for the made in the UK. And there are some other ones. This one I think is Belgium. Um, it's from the end of the 19th century. I'm pretty sure there's an exact match for this one in the book. So I'll probably pull that up when we do the book stuff. I'm, as I, I'm, I want to do the book stuff all at the end because I just want to show you there's different kinds, but and then prove that I, I kind of not bullshitting you at the end. So anyway, yeah, some, some of them, this one's got a faceted top here like this, like as a ball, and it looks like someone's chopped the top off, but that is the way it is. Yeah, it's got a little ring here at the bottom. Not all of them have that. Some of them have like just a ball here. Yeah, not faceted. So it's that kind of shape, but just in a ball. I did actually have one and I got rid of it because I was thinking someone's cut this off. I think I bought it as part of the job lot. And this is when I early started collecting. I didn't know such a thing existed and now regret. Um, but anyway, yeah, so that's how that looks. It's very... I mean, this is like a standard kind of Victorian-ish kind of thing, although it is made in Belgium. Star-cut base. You know, it's got a bit of wear and tear at the base there, but not masses, because this one is only, you know, 120 years old. Um, yeah, and the same inside the lip here. And it's called bar lip because this is made as barware, and they would have just jammed a cork in the top, so you'd have passed this round, you'd have had it behind the bar, filled up pre, possibly, and then just, there you go, use that. It's better than giving them the bottle. Um, but yeah, but very common in, well, I don't know how common, but I know there are a lot of them in America, but not very common here in the UK. It is big. Um, 
I think this is designed to hold a litre. You, see, you know, you know it's, a, it's a good job. Easily hold a bottle of wine, probably down to about here or something. So, yeah, bar lip decanter it is a thing. Watch out for them, in the, especially in the UK. They're not very common. These are a couple of um, simple bottle decanters. Um, they were probably made for a stand. They're quite tall and slim. You can see they will hold a bottle of wine. Um, and uh, yeah, they're just mold blown. These are probably pre-1850. Um, not very common. Lovely. Look at the colour. There's a bit of light from outside. Look at that. Yeah. Um, and then actually no no fitting inside for stoppers and you can see it's actually kind of like a a bell shaped it's not like a flat thing it just it's like a, the top is like a miniature carafe but it is a decanter because it would have had a stopper let me just borrow one of those other ones back see how it goes in yeah just jam that one back in there you go that's a bit high <laughs> actually way too high um, but anyway, you know what I've got now. Oh, anyway, um, yeah, so they would have had a couple of cork stoppers in there with little rings on the top or a little symbol of what they were or whatever, or a little ball. Um, yeah, so, and they would have been on a stand, maybe as a pair, maybe as a threesome, and this is what's left. Not that common. Um, I have seen others uh, usually in green, um, but not in amethyst. So, yeah, I can't remember where I got these. I've had, I've had these a very long time, um, like over 25 years. Uh, I think I bought them at an auction in Loughton. Um, and, yeah, I just thought they're really unusual. And they were, I think at the time, probably really cheap. Yeah, very simple, elegant, not too heavy, which makes me think, yeah, pre-1845, because tax by weight before 1845. So, yeah, but stick your finger down the top, you feel, yeah, never fitted for a stopper. And that's the thing, is if you see something without a stopper, or if you think, that stopper looks really wrong, was it ever fitted? Um, so anyway, so there's that. I'm only fitting this, putting this one in for completeness because you've seen it before. It's a Mel decanter. I did a video on Mel decanters. I showed you a lot of book references. This is the only one I've got. I won't bother with book references for this. You can go and look at my video for Mel decanters. But yeah, it's the same boat. It's, you know, never fitted. Um, and yeah, and these are from the mid... Um, 19th century so yeah similar period to a lot of the others we looked at um, so now I'm going to go a little bit more questionable is it a decanter is it a carafe kind of look going a bit earlier too so let's do that so I have this one which I am uncertain of I think in Andy McConnell's books these are listed as decanters. They look like they're from the 1830s or 40s, but I think they're a bit later. I'm trying to remember what's in the book. I haven't even looked in the book yet. So anyway, is it a carafe? I think he says that. What, should there have been a stopper, a cork stopper in this? Because look how narrow that is. Um, you know, if I... And just to make it kind of and make your decision harder, I'll have another one here, which has got a wider top, which is more like a carafe, but in actual fact, the hole in the middle is not that big compared to the bottle. Well, it's biggish compared to the bottle, but it's this one's actually got a small hole proportionally. Yeah, and this one's got a collar, it's similar. Look, it's got. No pontal. Oh, this one's got a polished base. 
this one's got a star cut base and needs a wash quite badly um, and then I have this one here which is kind of like in a similar category same neck ring as that one same polish bit this one's got printies these little circles polished on it which look really fantastic I think gives a lovely optical effect but when you look inside the hole is really quite small for a carafe um, let me um, let me dig out a craft. Let me stop a second. So this is what I'm brought out. Got that off the shelf behind me. I've got later ones that would be more period with this, but they're all down the shed, and I'm not going down, back down the shed. I've spent ages lugging all this, a lot of this stuff up from the shed. So this one here. Let me show you. This one is clearly a craft because look at the size of that hole and if you look at the size of you see no comparison that is clearly a carafe um you wouldn't have a cork in that you'd have a bung it would be a big lunk lunk if you were going to do that but this is a carafe it was never really designed to have any kind of stopper in the top it's so wide and i've got others that are just as big or even bigger so yeah so these i am kind of like Moo. yeah i think andy mcconnell's got those carafes um when you look at this one when you kind of go it's actually in the same category as these ones but it's bigger and the hole's even smaller you know i can hardly get my finger down it so yeah um Bit debatable. And let me show you a couple of others. So I've got these two here. Now these are earlier. Um, this one looks like it's about 1800, maybe earlier. This one is definitely more yeah, late 18th century tapered decanter. Um, and I don't know about these. Are they carafes or are they not? If they were Irish, Okay, I do actually keep a stopper in this one, which is an Irish style one, like this. Yeah, it's tiny and goes like that. Yeah, but that didn't come with it. Yeah, I just, I had that in the shed. I thought, stops the bottom from getting dust. In fact, actually, before I put it in, you can see it got a little bit of dust in it. And it just saves you from having, if you put a stopper in something, it just stops you from having to dust it every five years. Anyway, or clean it out. Just leave it dry. Anyway, um, so this one here, it's like an Irish one, but it's not. I have asked, because if because it's got two neck rings, it's like B. Edwards of Belfast would do these in either their bladed rings. Um, and I asked the Austin Museum if they thought, because I showed them a bunch of my decanters, they were unsure of this one. It's got a really deep kick, which really kind of tells you, you see that kick in the base, but then it is polished out as well. And normally you don't, you have a kick in the base like that to stop the pontal mark from scratching the table, but then they went and polished it out too. And then they've done a little bit of cutting here, which looks like post 1900 cutting, so a uh, post 1800 cutting. So it's very um, unusual. Is it a decanter? Is it a carafe? You know, got a small hole in the top. See, just a finger's worth. And never cut inside here. And then this one, got this from an antique center. I think it was like a fiver because it has, it's very damaged. Look at this, cracking that baby there, look at that. But I thought, oh, it's such a nice example. Look at the pon broken pontal. So this one is very 18th century. Look at the kick in the base. So when you're talking, you know, this is probably 240 years old. Uh, probably when I bought it about 20 years ago, it was 220 years old. But you know, I've managed to make it survive another 20. Um, yeah, this tapered is very classic 18th, late 18th century. Um, it's got three bladed neck rings. 
Hold it like that. Narrow neck, not cut for a stopper. Um, so someone has been forcing a stopper in it, I think, and that's why you've got this crack. But it was never fitted. I can feel my finger going round inside, and there's no edge to where it would have been fitted. So is that one would that have had some sort of cork is it a carafe i think i've put it in the carafe sections in my um on my website but i don't know and i think i'll put that one in a carafe one but yeah these narrow necks are not what you expect of a carafe um where you just like fill empty fill empty fill empty they've got quite narrow necks mm. so would they have had corks would it have just been a cork literally with no metal top because they're so early um yeah i don't know don't know at all or would it had something like this in which case it's a proper decanter but then you normally only see these in ireland yeah and yeah they're not your classic irish style decanters of that period so yeah very unknown they did in my books they've got some this shape irish ones this shape but they have ribbed base so yeah very difficult anyway so that's the glass and let's have a look in the books and see what the books show you this book is called english bottles and decanters by derek 1650 to 1900 by derek c davis um it says English, but it's got some Irish ones in it too. Now, this is a slightly older book. I think it's from the 60s. And yeah, sometimes you see mistakes. In fact, you see mistakes in all the books. But this one has a mistake um, in that this decanter is very like one of the ones I showed you at the beginning with the step cutting. It's got a shoulder there so with a cylinder cut panel. But mine was like smooth cut shape. But yeah, this is the kind of thing it was. Now... This one's got a stopper in it, but when you look very closely at that stopper, the shoulder of the stopper peg is above the bottom of the of the top of the lip. That should not be. Yeah. Generally, the shoulder is either on the lip or below. Okay. It shouldn't be poking out the top like that is someone has put that in there yeah and i bet if you stuck your finger in unless someone has actually fitted it afterwards it shouldn't be like that this should have had a copper uh, uh, cork stopper in it um so yeah but his dating i think his dating is okay uh he's saying it's okay if you yeah um but that is wrong that is not right um so yeah but lovely decanter otherwise get that out before it breaks the neck open like the last one i showed you but anyway but there is something else in this bo book that i didn't show you that i don't have but i should show you so one of the earliest forms of decanter in britain i think in europe as well is this one is called a cruciform and you can see in actual fact those ones i was showing you where they've got a ring and they've got the neck but no pouring lip it's like this now this w was before they invented the fitted stopper okay this ring here is that you'd put a cork on in the top but the cork would not fit tight yeah, it would be more like a T shape. So the, yeah, the bit of it would go inside, but it wouldn't, not like modern bottles where it's fitted really tightly. Um, and what they would do is they would have a string that they would put over the top and tie it around this ring to hold the cork in place. So yeah, so that's, this ring is from, um, appears on bottles of that era where that's how they did them. So this is a cruciform. If you see something like this anywhere, 
unless it's four or five hundred pounds if you see it going cheap looking really scabby like this one buy it because the date on this is 1730 and yeah these are a few hundred pounds so if you see something like this nobody spotted it because it is really rare yeah there's your chance it's a i have seen them out and about and i regret not buying one ever because when i started collecting i thought yeah yeah i'll get one of those eventually and they were selling for about you know a hundred pounds then which was a lot of money and now they're several hundred pounds so that's how the cookie crumbles as they say um but anyway um yeah very early style and you can see where that later mid 19th century style came from with the single neck ring and the bit of the bit sticking out the top with no pouring lip because there's another one which has got a stopper but yeah the same ring because they brought it over from here to here even though they've got a fit stopper but they still hadn't really invented the pouring lip as we know it today this book is the decanter ancient to modern by andy mcconnell <clears throat> and what i'm going to plan on doing is just flicking through this bit book and picking out some bits of interest um, and this is the first bit so the last two that i showed you there well kind of bladed neck ring not this is an unfitted stopper that's a little bit high i wouldn't have thought it'd been that high but anyway you can see what i mean look at the base of that neither of mine were like this with this molded base you can see this is very emblematic of irish decanters of that period um so yeah that's why i think maybe it's an irish one maybe it's not you don't know but it's got a little narrow neck and it's not fitted for a polished you know fitted for a stopper as such the stoppers just plonk in and sit on top so yeah that's why i'm a bit conundrumy about those last two should they be like this or should they just be without stopper and that's the way they are and that they're english don't know sticking with um andy mcconnell's book here we've got this one here which is not i mean this one's clearly made for a stopper it's got a pouring lip and everything but it's like that one that i had and this is why i was kind of like umming and ahhing about the date um because look at the star with the step cutting and the panels and he's saying 1825 so but i think the way the top is and the height makes it more like a mid cent closer to mid-century but anyway but it shows you how early this fashion of this cutting and these panels is from here's a bunch of tall decanters and it's funny some of them have got the neck ring like this this one here as well i don't think these are english i hope someone stuck their finger down inside it and checked that it was right before they took the picture this um but yeah he's dating these 1850 which goes along with what i'm trying to figure out but you can see quite a few of these tall ones don't have stoppers and they may never have been fitted for them and would have had those cork ones like i showed you i wasn't going to show you this page because it's with the male decanters um but yeah look these are the stoppers but also i thought i'd show you something so this is i've got two copies of this this is my um rough copy so to speak this is the one i beat up and use all the time and yeah i have a correction that i've made on this page here put a line through here he says 1860 and blah, 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 blah. but it's i know it's made by hill ooston circa 1930 because i've seen an advert with that very decanter in it and i have one too so yeah books and are good but they're not always the final say in everything, even a modern book like this. I'm living and learning from this book as I'm going, because I don't normally do this kind of thing where I'm looking for a specific thing in a book. Look at all these ones with the no pouring lip, the ring, but with a stopper. And that stopper clearly goes with that bottle and that stopper clearly goes with that bottle and that stopper clearly goes with that one. Yeah. But this one doesn't have a stopper and may never have had one. So, yeah, I'm learning a bit. And, um, yeah, 
that ring, you just need to stick your finger in and see, does it feel like it's ever been cut? These, if you put your finger in there, you'll feel where it's been cut, but quite um, a few of the ones without this, with this, wouldn't have had a glass stopper. So yeah, what's nice is he's verifying my date. He's saying pre-1845 for all of these, so um, which is where I would like mine to be, or I thought it would be. So that's quite good. This is interesting. Um, got a tall Rytham one here with a little tiny bar lip. Can you see this little rounded lip at the top? He's seeing this is from 1860. It doesn't say where it's from. But the other thing is, I didn't realize, yeah. Here's the other decanter that we were seeing, the yellow one that we were seeing earlier that I put the mistaken thing on. Here it is. Um, this is actually the picture from the advert I've seen. I, I know what other book I've seen it in. And, um, and yeah, he's saying this is from 1930 by Hill Ooston, just like I said, or well, marked. So I'm going to put the line through and do a little arrow. So, yeah, that's funny. Um, but anyway, let's move on. So here we have um, one of the little bottles we saw. Now, he's got this in the he's saying it's a bar measure which fails me is it a carafe or is it a decanter now none of his have stoppers here so that implies that they're probably carafes even though it's got a narrow neck because this has got a narrow neck as well you can see this is clearly i mean a carafe because it's got a nice fat top and everything but that's got a narrow neck and that's got a narrow neck um and look, and that's got a cork stopper with a ring and no pouring lip. But anyway, this looks like it's got a line drawn on it. My, none of mine do, so they're not bar measures. But the page implies they are carafes and not decanters without stoppers. But is the big one that or not? Because, yeah, because it's got a very narrow neck, but it's also quite big for it being a bar measure. So here we are on another page. These are the bar lip decanters. And if we scroll in, this one here, this is the one I showed you. Dun, dun, dun. And what does he say? 1845 to 60. So it's a bit earlier than I thought. Franco-Belgian. So, yeah, that is the one. Bar lip decanter. And, um, yeah, I've never seen other, any other one apart from the one that I have. I think mine's a little, little bit more rounded, but it's close enough. It's still got the same zigzaggy pattern here where the panels meet and it's still got the faceted top and the little ring here. So, yeah, that's what that is. So, these are carafes in his book. This is the, the carafe section. And... Look at this here. Yeah, and he's dated that 1780, which is nice because that's what I said. So I don't feel such a bullshitter. So, yeah, it's a carafe. And, um, okay, I think I'm going to stop wading through this book now. So, what have I concluded from this video? Yeah, maybe I should do my research the other way around, look in the book first, and then make my video. Or maybe this is more fun, just exploring, going through the book. Um, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, that's the way I made it. Um, I'm not going to remake this. Um, I think it's, yeah, it, it was interesting to do it this way around. Um, at least it was for me, because you, you kind of go, this is what I think, and then you kind of look through the books and go, hmm, maybe what I think is not quite right all of the time. Yes. So, with that said, I'm going to wrap this up. Um, the descriptions of the books will be in the description below. And yeah, but please remember to like and subscribe because it does help my channel. And um, yeah, I'll be making more videos. So um, thank you for watching and have a good e evening. Thank you. Good night.